been at the tedious task of making uh, cedar shakes for the roof of the cabin. And uh, yeah, I need about uh, 36, 3,800 of them roughly. So, um, but full disclosure, um, I'm not gonna be able to get them off my own woodlot, believe it or not. I've got thousands of cedars, but they need to be straight grain. And the test one does is to take a strip of bark off the bottom and rip upwards. If the bark tears straight up the tree, the grain on the inside of the material will be straight and good enough material to make shakes from. But over the years, we've depleted a lot of good stuff with canoe building and making shakes for other buildings, chicken coops and roofs and such. So I may have to buy some of the shingles for, for the cabin, but I'm repurposing today for this purpose. I've cut what we call bolts and I'm using a couple of my cutoff tools for my hardy hole and my anvil to split them. So these are reasonably straight grain. They're a little bit small, but they still will make a shake. So I've split it in half. Now we're going to take this guy here and we're going to split him in half again. So it's essential um, when we're throwing out, we're going to use the fro next. And when we're throwing them out, you see their grain running this way. So our shakes have to come off here or here. It has to cross the grain. If you don't, what ends up on the roof is that they're all going to cup on you. And you're going to have a roof that doesn't hold out water. So, so the next step is to get the fro. And we're going to start by taking uh, what we want them basically is an inch wide at the bottom end. Uh, or the eave end of the house and tapering nothing at the at the roof the peak end of the house so grab the throw and see if we can how straight this grain actually is so this tree that i cut here uh, the bolt that i'm using I, I counted the rings this morning and and uh turns out the tree is just a tad younger than me it's 64 years old so ideally if one can find cedars that are a foot or greater in diameter that would make them a hundred plus years they're ideal for shakes these are good but what it means is i need a lot more of them so the the um, older growth trees are going to give me a much wider shake but it'll work so we want one inch at the top and then our, to finish them we're going to go to the shaving horse It's turned rather snapping cold out here today and I have to get a bit more clothes on. Um, you can see by the quality of the material I've got here, it's not bad, but simply isn't big enough and uh, like I said, I'm going to have to purchase some, uh, some cedar shakes. A bit of history behind the shake. Uh, when the settlers came to North America in the New England states, upper and lower Canada, um, they left a home where the typical roof would either be thatch, tile, or in some cases slate. But because of the abundance of wood and the quality of wood, like this wood, uh, they uh, basically built the whole bill from wood, including the roof, and it became the norm. They'd even decorate them. So in urban centers, bigger urban centers like Philadelphia, Boston, New York, they would dye the shingles red, gray, uh, some other color they use, red, gray, brown, uh, I guess just for aesthetics. The bulk of the roofs would have been just left untreated. Um, sometimes they would treat them with a linseed oil, uh, and sometimes, uh, apparently, I've, I've yet to find the actual formula, but they used a pine pitch substance as well. But the bulk of them would have just been left to weather. Um, 
a, a well laid cedar roof will last 40 to 60 years, unlike our, our modern materials we use today. So anyway, I'm off to the shaving horse and I've got a bunch of these cut out now and I'm going to see if I can shape them up. So the first step in hand shaping shapes is to flatten one side. So I pick what would appear to be the best one to work from, get it flat, and then the taper I discussed will all go on the opposite side. So we want one inch at the, at, as I said, at the bottom end and taper to nothing at the top. They're roughly 24 inches long. So I'm going to pick this side to get our flat spot on and we'll get it shaped down here. Got one side pretty flat, certainly it's doable, usable. The next step is to get the sides parallel and fairly straight. They don't have to be perfectly straight because the secret to putting a cedar shaped roof on is you leave gaps. So we're going to nail it down to what the old timers called girts. So what that does is it leaves an air space underneath the shape that it'll dry. If you just nail it, you saw how I did the ceiling with um, as you can see, the ceiling of the veranda here is all seated solid with uh, rough sound pine. So if I just nailed it flat to that, the top would dry out uh, and be maintained, but it would get wet and hold that moisture underneath. So we're going to use girts like the old timers use when we nail these things down. So the next step is to get this relatively straight edge along the side. But as I say, we're going to leave about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch gap between each shake. Because they overlap, as long as we make sure we've got a good inch and a half overlap on the shake below it, you're gonna have a watertight roof. Nothing gives me more appreciation for our ancestor pioneers uh, than shake making. So I've made shakes for entire buildings like our chicken coop and numerous roofs as I mentioned um, and it is a time-consuming process. But we have one finished there you can see the taper so roughly an inch at this end tapering to nothing at this end and if you've got blemishes in them as long as they're concealed uh, they don't matter and if they don't go right through they don't matter whether they're concealed or not so as long as that side was up on the roof. Um, yeah so we've got one completed and a few hundred more I'm going to take a bit of a break from my cabin build right now. Our supply of, uh, of chaga, uh, we use chaga as a medicine. It's a great medicine and this is the time of year to harvest it. And our supply is just about depleted. So a bit of a break from the tedious process of making shakes and we'll see if we can get, I know exactly where I'm going. So it shouldn't take me too awful long and I'll get back to the shakes. Snowshoes, start right off. So here we have chaga. So it's a fungi that grows on um, either birch, uh, white birch, or yellow birch. Relatively hard to find. It's a fungi that actually starts in the heart of the tree. So the tree gets it right from infancy stage. And as the tree gets older, it literally grows out and it'll eventually burst through and form these, these conks that you see. Um, it's a great medicinal tea, makes a great medicinal tea. Uh, it, uh, it's full of antioxidants. It's a great anti-inflammatory. I, mean, I drink a cup or two a day and it's not really an acquired taste. It's quite a pleasant sort of a nutty, earthy taste to it. And uh, as I said, we're just about depleted our supply so we're going to harvest this the time for harvesting 
is right now. So you need a good week or so of below minus 10 temperatures. And you have to harvest it from a tree that's alive or was alive certainly in the fall. So if you locate it, make sure the tree is foliated. That's the tree you're going to come back to and harvest it from. Uh, if you take it all, your supply is done. Um, as you can see, I've harvested some of it here earlier, um, a year ago, and, and it's, it'll grow back. But if I take all of this off, I've depleted my supply. So I'm going to just take this one chunk from this tree. Uh, there's a few more chunks up higher that I can get at, too. There's some around the back side here. I'll probably take one off of it. And I can return to this tree for a number of years to, um, to harvest the jagger. So it's not just the golden interior you can use, it's even the blacker part on the outside is usable. So what I do now is I'll take that back, I'll dry it out, I'll cube it up a bit, and uh, we'll dry that out those cubes. Now you can use that, just throw a couple or three of them in, the, in your teapot, and boil them up, steep it up for about 20 minutes, they suggest, to get extract all those good medicinal things. And the list of the medicinal ingredients are too long for me to list, it's worth researching phenomenal medicine right from the wild but the neat part about chag is it has another purpose and it's a great fire starter a good friend of mine bob miller showed me this trick and even green right off the tree if you got that in your fire starter kit you can get a spark to land on that it can be a downpour a deluge of rain and that thing's still going to glow so great fire starter great medicine you can harvest one chunk of this up and we'll get it back and get it processed Okay, we have to, uh, here, here's the point where I make a full disclosure because my historian buffs are gonna tear me apart. But they didn't have roofing paper in 1750. Uh, and it was sort of an afterthought. Roof would probably be fine, but this is sort of the inheritance of my grandchildren. So decided to use roofing paper. So you can see the things I referred to earlier as girts. So this allows the space underneath each of the shakes for, for drying out. It gives me an alien surface. What we're doing is exposing approximately 10 inches. 10 inches, 10 inches, working our way up on an angle till we finish the roof. But on the bottom, because here we can see we're spanning a good inch and a half or so, at least, a minimum, of the one below. So we've essentially got three three levels of, of once we get past the first one, three levels covering the entire roof. But on the bottom one, we have to put a starter row and that gets spanned. So two rows go across the entire bottom, and then a single row as we progress up, making sure we're spanning each of these cracks. We're also leaving, you can see the space here. Uh, one other disclosure, couldn't keep up with it, the nail making on the forge, so we've, uh, we've actually got some store-bots here, um, which again gives me a huge appreciation for the hardy people that lived in that time period. Anyway, I'm going to get nailing these shakes on, get this closed in, and then I can get on to the next part of the build.
So down to it, uh, what I decided to do on the peak piece, instead of uh, overlapping shakes the opposite direction, I just decided to use plank. And so I've used uh, six inch on either side, which I lapped, and then three inch on either side over top of the six inch, which I lap. And uh, yeah, it should be pretty watertight roof. Anyway, I've got one board to go, a couple of cuts to make, and this roof is done.